This extensively detailed Aikido book reads a lot like a textbook. Hi guys, my name is Joe and welcome to Fighting Words, the martial arts library. On this channel I review martial arts books and talk about other martial arts related subjects. The subject for today's review is Aikido, the Basics by Bodo Rodel. Apologies if I mispronounced the name. It was originally published in 2009. My copy was published in 2011. Uh, I believe it was originally published in German. Mr. Rodel is from Germany. As for Mr. Rodel himself, uh, he began training Aikido in the 1970s and has practiced ever since then. Uh, at the time of writing, he was a fifth degree black belt in the Aikikai organization. Chapter one covers the history of Aikido as well as the nature of Aikido. Uh, it details that Aikido is basically learning ways of moving, that the Do in Aikido is meant to represent that it's more about the process than the end result. This chapter also discusses the the term ki, in this aspect he refers to it as intention, as well as comparing Aikido to other martial arts like Karate and Taekwondo. We also get an overview of Aikido training. This includes a section discussing how weapons are used in Aikido. There are, for instance, knife defenses, as well as the use of and defense against the forefoot staff and the sword. The second chapter of the book begins to get into the physical side of things. We begin with an explanation of proper posture in Aikido, followed by movement. And this includes several different footwork types, like moving at 90 degree angles, moving at 180 degree angles. Uh, this also includes moving from the knees, which is something that was found in traditional Japanese martial arts. He also will discuss the three types of sword guards used in Aikido, including the placement of the feet for those various guards. Chapter 3 is on arm movements or hand movements. Most of these movements are in response to attacks. So, for example, there are a number of responses against being grabbed on the wrist. We also see responses when you are handling a sword and somebody grabs you as you're, you have your sword and how to respond to that. And we also get responses versus strikes. These would be seen as sort of like blocks or deflections or in some cases just sort of like riding the force of the attack. In chapter four, we get examples of how to work together as training partners in Aikido. Uh, there are examples here of, you know, basic attacks and responses to that, but the emphasis is placed on the role of both partners in executing the specific movements that they are responsible for. In a lot of ways, this comes across to me as sort of being very dance-like. Chapter 5 is the longest chapter of the book. This is where we actually get to see the breadth of the techniques of Aikido being used against various attacks. There is sort of a prejudice toward showing multiple attacks for some of the most common techniques, you know, like your fundamental Shihonage, for example, the four corner throw that would be very common in Aikido. Whereas some of the less common techniques usually only get one example of their application being used against an opponent. Chapter 6 comes back to some of the principles of Aikido. Uh, it talks about the use of proper posture, of having proper distance, what's commonly referred to in Japanese martial arts as mai, as making sure that there's an exchange of energy. This is where the Aiki, the blending of energy in Aikido comes from, you know, working at different angles. The idea being that all these principles are what make your techniques work. So by understanding the principles, your techniques will come out better. In chapter seven, we get even more of the learning process. 
It shows three phases of learning. One is with a static partner or uke. Uke is receiver, receives a technique. So uke would be the one who's like doing the wrist grabs, right? So the first phase, uke grabs your wrist and is effectively static while you move into your technique. In phase two, both people offer a little bit of energy, both people are in motion. And in phase three, the objective is that uke is the most dynamic factor in this, while tori, the aikiruka, is basically the eye of the storm, if you will. They are the center and they can move uke around that. In this chapter, in order to illustrate this, we get to see multiple techniques shown at their different phases of that learning process and application. And we also get information on the, the things that make this whole subject work, such as the intention behind the movement, as well as making sure that you have proper rhythm. You know, if uke reaches for you, you have to blend with that movement at the proper time. You know, if you're off rhythm by a little bit, you know, they get to finish executing your attack or they're not there for you to create your response. Chapter 8 goes over the role of Uke, who we were just talking about. So Uke is, in demos, is the attacker. Again, the term Uke means to receive. Uh, it's interesting that this is the first chapter in the book that shows thing what we call Ukeme, which is like break falls and rolling. You know, how to protect yourself if you're getting thrown. Uh, in most other books, this would actually be closer to the front of the book. It would be one of the, the first fundamental things shown. So I do find that it's interesting that it comes later on in the book. Uh, we also get the, the way uke should execute their basic grabs and strikes in order to be a good uke for tori. Chapter 9 is sort of a wrap-up and is also sort of a grab bag. Um, among other things, there's a pretty good warm-up section. Uh, we get a bit of a biography of Christian Tissier, whose name I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, who's Mr. Rodell's instructor. We get a history of Aikido, and this will include a timeline. We get, as well a list of the techniques that are expected for grading at the different Q grades, which are at the lower rank grades, before you get to black belt. There is also discussion on dojo etiquette, on the equipment that you will use in Aikido. Uh, there is a frequently asked questions FAQ section for beginners, as well as a general glossary for Aikido and a list of resources for people who are further interested in the study of Aikido. As far as the pros go, one thing that sticks out immediately is that you know we have good clear color photographs. I think that sort of helps with understanding the movements. I think that it's extremely well organized uh, it, it just, it reads like a textbook. It really does. You know, we got these bullet points at the beginning of every chapter about what the chapter is going to cover. You know, they're asking questions that will get the reader in the mindset of like, okay, what are we going to get into this chapter? What am I going to discover? Uh, I also think it gives very thorough explanations of the techniques and the principles behind them. <laughs> As far as the cons go, uh, I do have to say that in some places it seemed kind of contradictory, you know, or it was difficult for me to follow. Part of me wonders if that was something that was part of the translation process. Again, I'm pretty confident that when the book was originally published, it was published in German. For instance, there's uh, a section early on where, you know, he says, truly Aikido can be called a sport. And later on, he seems to try to differentiate Aikido from sports. So it doesn't come up a lot, but 
you know, there were times that it made it a little bit difficult to follow in some places. Uh, as well, for those who are interested in self-defense, that is not included in this. You know, he makes a point multiple times that this is a collective endeavor. We're learning Aikido to get good at Aikido. We're not learning Aikido for self-defense. You can totally use it for that. But because of that, there's not anything in the way of, you know, street applicable self-defense techniques in this. So, recommendations. I think this is a pretty good book for those who are interested in the practice of Aikido. It might be the best one. Out there. It's not my favorite Aikido book. You know, I still think Aikido in the dynamic sphere is just awesome on so many levels, but if you are beginner or intermediate at least in studying Aikido, I think that this would be an excellent book to get in order to understand the practice of Aikido. So that's all I have for this week. Thank you for tuning in. And if you would like to suggest a book to me, or if you'd like to support the channel, please consider donating to my coffee account. And that's all I have. Thank you for watching.